What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and as you can see behind me I have my knight in satin nardo grey armour behind me. I hope you all enjoyed the movie that I uploaded on Sunday and then also the stresses of behind the scenes of when technology goes wrong and you're uploading a video to YouTube. As you can see I've got my absolute uh, dream machine behind me. What an insane car and um, it was fantastic to learn so much about it over the two weeks of me being in Europe. This video is going to break down some of the running costs. I think it was arguably the most asked question since I returned. How much did the trip cost? Where did I spend my money? And how well did this car perform on fuel? Um, running costs, tyres, brakes and everything like that. So this video is definitely going to break that down for you. If you're looking to do something similar it will also give you an idea on how much things cost. So to begin with, let's talk about where the money was spent. Number one, a lot of it was spent on fuel. And then of course, number two, it was a lot on hotels. We stayed the night in Grenoble, Lake Como, Austria and Cologne twice before driving home and then there's also all of the mini little bits that you pay for as well like the ferry over um, then the Euro tunnel going back food and drink every day parking during the night and then um, out in Monaco every single day I drove the car down to top marks and I parked in either the casino car park or one of the other car parks like Grimaldi or things like that but the thing is with Monaco compared to London parking is so cheap and also so easy in Monaco it was around six to seven euros for the whole day of car parking whereas um, in London six seven pounds an hour so um, huge difference in terms of parking costs and one of the fantastic things that we had um, in our favor was also how weak the euro was to the pound which is fantastic to start off start things off let's talk about how much this car costs to fill up to the max so that when I tell you how many fuel stops I did it's very easy to work out this car costs around on average 90 pounds to fill up it's approximately an 80 85 litre tank and at the moment prices of fuel are around 1.12, 1.13 here in Watford um, but across um, Europe they were very sort of similar at the 120 um, euros which um, is a fantastic uh, cost for the car and let's start on where I filled the car up. So I started in Watford. I filled it all the way to the brim because I did the GAD tuning challenge down to Leon. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. So we've refilled just outside Leon, which is tank number two. Tank number three came just before Monaco. I could have made it from Leon to Monaco in one tank, but um, I thought that because I was going to be driving this car around, I just wanted to get the refill out the way. So tank number three came just outside of Monaco. I didn't fill up during the whole week of top marks, which um, again, huge praise to the insane V8 that GAD Tuning have uh, magically turned into a Prius, um, but it still sounds like a V8. Um, and then we filled up on the morning of leaving Monaco. And then what you saw from the movie, I filled up just outside of Grenoble on day two. I then filled up... Um, after Lake Como um, and then again in Liechtenstein and then twice in Cologne on both nights that I stayed there. So I only filled up, how many times is that? Three down, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times of fuel, does that work out right? So we've covered fuel and in this car it is insane and by all means if you're going to be doing a road trip in a car that's got a slightly smaller engine um, then you can start cutting costs in terms of fuel um, but then if you're doing it in anything bigger like a Merchel Argo LP640 that someone might do um, in the near future, I don't know who that could be, um, then you're looking at even steeper fuel costs. A lot steeper. Um, let's move on to hotels because we stayed the night in Grenoble, Lake Como, Austria and then Cologne twice if uh, that makes sense, five nights and I've worked out on average that the hotel cost was around 100, 110. We stayed in fantastic hotels, Tim Shmi 150 organised all of the hotels and they were all four star. My favourite was Cologne, we stayed two nights in Cologne and it was just a, a fantastic looking building um, but we worked out about 100, 110 pounds uh, per night and that was uh, for two people people in the room so it wasn't too bad it was fairly reasonable it was also around 20 euros about 15 quid per night to keep the car in a secure car park the hotel car park which wasn't too bad and then dinner was around 40 to 50 euros per night it was nothing ex expensive or extravagant I think everyone there just wanted to spend all of their money on fuel 
um, and have a fantastic driving holiday. Um, and then when we were just resting, it was all a case of just getting the biggest, most uh, filling meal possible, pizza, pasta, burgers, whatever it was. Um, perfect ideal menu for me, being a sort of a McDonald's fiend. So we've done fuel, we've done hotels. Now we're gonna get down to the really, really annoying costs that um, I think are just, generic when it comes to European driving. I had to pay for tolls in France, which cost around 120 euros, which is about one more full tank. And then when we were in Switzerland and Austria, you also have to have these motorway uh, tax sticker things, which cost around 40 um, Swiss currency CHFs. Um, and then the Austrian one was around 45 euros. And I actually think Tim paid for that, so I owe him money. <laughs> um, but when you're driving in Europe and you're driving on the motorways out there, um, there's more tolls than there are in England, um, which um, I suppose I'm not used to because I drive all the time in England. Um, but it was just um, an, another cost that was just not welcome. Costs, the ferry was around 55 pounds and the channel tunnel was just under 100 quid. So now we move on to the sort of foods, the generic parking costs, and I took out 500 euros cash with me, which was just gonna cover the parking costs in Monaco, and also just using cash for things like lunch, dinner, whilst I was out there for top marks and anything that I wanted to buy whilst I was out there. The 500 euros lasted about a week and a half on food, parking and things like that, mostly on food, because as I mentioned, parking was relatively cheap. Um, so overall, I had a fantastic trip. I spent just under 2,000 pounds, and that was really um, based on that two weeks there was two people, myself and my girlfriend, you may have seen her in the wing mirror of uh, the movie. A lot of people have spotted her. Um, so when you start splitting that times two, like I said, if you've got a less thirsty car than this, um, it, you can do a fantastic two week Euro road trip for something very, very reasonable. And if you're sort of driving a petrol head, then 1,500 quid, 1,500 quid, 2,000 pounds, um, split by, down the middle, is actually a very very cheap two-week holiday and like the, the the weather that we got in Monaco, Lake Como and the south of France was just amazing between 23 and 27 degrees on every single day and it was only when we started getting closer to the UK as you saw in the movie that the weather started getting a lot worse so this car has massively massively um, outperformed my expectations of what it was going to be the quattro system is insane I feel like I should love I would love to do a car review out in the uh, French hills or the Italian hills or wherever it is and I'm fingers crossed going to be going back to Monaco very very soon and not in this car either so whatever car I'm able to take um, it will really be interesting to do a review about what it's like to drive a real car <laughs> in real roads because here in England I've just realized that you can't take cars to the limit you can't even take them to 30% of what they're capable of doing this is by all means not the last time that I'm going to be doing a road trip and um, I think I've got it in my head that I would love to do one every every two months would be absolutely fantastic so uh, that's definitely a plan of mine and I'm going to get sort of planning and putting those plans into actions as well so I can create some really, really cool content for you, not just in England, not just with this car, and then at the end of it all, create another movie. And it's, I just would love to do that for YouTube. But I think that would be the dream, the absolute dream. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, and sort of I've summarized what the costs are in general. If you've got any questions or if you've got any more sort of hidden costs that I've forgotten about, then please let me know. Um, first thing says, I didn't go into the casino and spend my own money, so there wasn't any costs there. Um, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have enjoyed this whole sort of, I think it's turned into a sort of a month experience on Supercars of London, the amount of videos that I've done. Let me know what your favorite video is from all time from the Monaco Top Marks 2015, and where would you like to see me drive next on YouTube, whether it's in this car or pick a car, pick your dream road trip that you'd love to see on Supercars of London. What car, where you want me to see me to drive to, what videos you want me to do and everything like that. So I really look forward to these comments and um, I will be uh, checking back on YouTube very, very soon. This week, I'm gonna be doing an upload um, uh, of an update of what's going on on the Supercars of London channel over the next sort of two weeks or so. Um, I'm starting to feel out of breath now. <sighs> 
But there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe if you don't for so much more cool, cool content to come. Oh God, I'm cocking up the outro. <laughs> I will see you very, very soon. Take care, guys. Before I go, there might be a question on where I stayed in Monaco. And for those that follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you would have seen that I stayed with Seb Delaney. I'd like to thank him uh, and his parents for the amazing hospitality over the week uh, whilst we stayed there for Top Mark a place for the car to rest um, and also just a fantastic atmosphere. I had a lot of fun there and I look forward to many more trips down to the south of France very, very soon. Um, and yeah, make sure that you check out Seb Delaney on YouTube, which he's also got his daily vlog channel, which is Seb Daily, Sam, Seen Through Glass, and also Tim Shmoo 150 um, for more insane content from the Euro road trip. And I'm sure we're gonna be doing a lot of fantastic collaborations to come. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I am gonna get jumping back into my car, cruising back, editing this video up, and um, I will see you soon. Cheers.